All right, and in this last one, uh, we're going to look at this last one for the e-commerce funnel module. We're going to talk about your launch strategy. And originally, I was going to do this as it's as a separate module uh, because it's it's kind of a standalone topic, but at the same time, it fits in really well with what we're talking about here because your launch strategy does have to do with your funnel, right? Because your funnel is the idea of mapping out your customer journey from start to finish, and then maximizing conversions is the idea of understanding the, the psychology and the, the technical points at each part of that journey to help guide customers through in the most uh, logical and least friction possible to a purchase and then your launch strategy kind of brings it all together with what are you going to do now from here to actually go to market and launch because after this we get into facebook ads and then there's a section on instagram and then there's a section on google and so we start to look at all the different marketing angles of what you can use and and where you can market your business but it doesn't mean you want to do it all at once right and it doesn't mean you want to do it randomly and just start trying things. You wanna have a strategy and, and you wanna understand your strategy as part of your overall funnel for what you're gonna do and then matching a marketing method to that that makes sense. So the assumption here is that your store is already built and you know what you are selling, okay? If not, I'm not saying don't watch the training, but you're probably gonna to have to come back and watch it again because most of this is gonna be specific to you already knowing what you're selling because how can you have a launch strategy if you don't already have a product, right? You have to, or products. It doesn't mean you have to have one single product, right? But you have to at least have a store and have narrowed in on some product ideas that you know you wanna launch with. Number one, you need to identify your SMART goals, okay? This is broad level concept, right? Not, not specific to like, oh, should I launch Facebook or Google? This is broad level concept of you, you, before you even get started in launching at this point, you should have, you should start identifying your business goals, okay? And SMART is the acronym for specific, measurable, achievable, realistic, and timely, okay? These are what make a goal a goal. And each one of these matters in the sense that, number one, if you're not specific, then it's going to be hard to execute, right? You can't just say, oh, I want to make a lot of money this year, right? You have to have an actual dollar amount of, of what your goal is that you want to produce in revenue. And then what, what should that be in profit, right? Measurable, okay? How will you know when you achieved it? What's, what's the... Uh, what are what are the benchmarks okay how, how are you going to measure your progress right if you want to achieve a certain amount of money then are you going to split it up in the quarters or you know like you you have to have a way that you're monitoring your progress along the way achievable okay this you know it's it's got to be something that you can achieve okay it's got to be realistic all right you have to have not only the resources uh but you have to be able to realistically accomplish it okay you can't say that oh i want to make one billion dollars in my store in the next year that's not achievable or realistic all right so you know think about that number one it's got to be like within what your current resources are don't set a goal that's outside of your achievements right if you only have a thousand dollars in startup cash it's it's a it's you're better off saying my goal is to get to $100,000 in four months than saying my goal is to get to a million dollars in uh, 12 months, right? Like your goal may be to get to a million dollars in 12 months, but the shorter term goal is more achievable because it's something that's much more within the scope of, of like from where you are to where you want to go. Um, but realistic as well in the sense that don't just make up something absurd like to say you want to make a billion dollars in the first year is just absurd right it's absurd for me to even use as an example so you want to be realistic about what you say and then timely right putting an actual time measurement on it one year one month four months five weeks whatever it is all right and then the reason why this is powerful is because then you can reverse engineer your goal and break it down into pieces okay so this is just an example that i think is easy to understand if your goal is to make a million dollars uh in sales in 12 months then if we reverse engineer that it's eighty-three thousand dollars per month in sales 
which breaks down to 21,000 per week, which breaks down to $3,000 per day, give or take, right? Like these aren't exactly to the decimal, but give or take, that lets you know $3,000 per day is about what you need to get to. That's that's the average that you need to be achieving if you wanna do a million dollars in 12 months. And so when you finally have that number, number one, that makes it much more bite size, right? Much more, uh, something much more manageable than just $1 million in 12 months. That's why it helps to break it down and reverse engineer that goal. But now you have to start thinking about, okay, so if my goal to do this is $3,000 per day, so at what product price point do I need to be? How many sales is it gonna take me to do that every day, right? If, I'm, if you're trying to sell a $10 product and do $3,000 in sales a day, that means you gotta sell 300 units a day, right? If you're selling a $100 product, now you only need to sell 30 units a day. So you, you wanna think about your product price point and what you're gonna sell to achieve that goal. And then how are you gonna achieve that? What, what marketing platform is gonna let you use that? Uh, what, what amount of money are you willing to invest? What team members do you need? Are you doing it all by yourself? Are you bringing other people in? You know, do you have the knowledge already? Do you need to go gain the knowledge? Do you have the capital already? Do you need to go gain the capital to do this? So this is how uh, you reverse engineer your goal and then start planning these things out. Number two, identify your target market. All right, and we talked about this earlier in the research phase, but you wanna, you wanna know down to a science, who is your, your ideal target market, okay? And these are just examples. So Starbucks, right? Primary 49% men and women, ages 25 to 40, attracted by the hip contemporary store design. That's their that's their primary target, right? First target. Secondary target, 40% of people that's young adults between 18 to 24, and it's positioned as a place to hang out, study, or write papers, okay? So that means that they have two targets. They have the larger target that they is their primary goal and the secondary target, and they're gonna create two different types of marketing messages, one for each of them, because they're two different types of audiences, right? There's gonna be blend and overlap in the overall branding of Starbucks, but the specific message that they put out is gonna be unique to the target market. You wanna think about your target market and understand who they are. You can have more than one. It just means you're gonna have more than one message. And then from there, you wanna think about who is your actual ideal customer, okay? This is an example of a, a customer avatar or a uh, customer persona, whatever you want to call it. And this is how, you know, getting like in depth, breaking it down to the point that you know this person so well that you can market them to exactly, uh, exactly what they need and, and even to exactly where you want them to see your marketing, right? So you see all this stuff about their age and demographics, uh, their main characteristics, a little bit of a bio, personality, preferred channels, right? Chrome, mobile, this this lets you know like how you're gonna reach them. What are their goals and frustrations? What are their motivations? What kind of brands do they follow? I'm not gonna go into each one of these specifically because honestly, there is a lot of information out there about creating an ideal customer persona, but this gives you enough to understand what your goal should be, right? If you're selling products and, and you're thinking about your brand, you want to think about, okay, am I selling to young people? Am I selling to older people? Am I selling to uh, people that are looking for these types of things in life or these types of things? Because that's going to affect your messaging, right? If somebody who's organized, practical, hardworking, and proactive is a lot different than somebody who's careless, fun-loving, haphazard, and, you know, fly by the seat of their pants, right? Those are two different personality traits, which are gonna require two different types of messages. So you can use this here. Uh, this is as a guideline. You don't necessarily have to go so in-depth as to like create all of this here, but uh, to think about the brands that they follow, to think about what motivates them, to think about how you would characterize them, think about what type of personality they have, what type of goals they have. These are all fantastic things to really consider um, based on the brand that you wanna build because it's gonna help you craft your messages 
to, to really connect with your audience. What's the best way to reach them? All right, this is important. Where do they live online? We're talking about e-commerce, so we're gonna be selling online. So where do they live online? All right, Facebook, I, I like to start, I would suggest starting with Facebook or Google because almost everybody lives on Facebook or Google. Now, the type, the type of product or brand that you have, one might work better than the other because remember, they're different. Google is search-based. So if you have a product that has a search volume and no brand loyalty, excuse me, if you have a product with search volume and no brand loyalty, then Google Shopping might be a great avenue because no brand loyalty means people aren't looking for any specific brand and if they come there and search it, that, you know, then maybe you have a product that fits that need for that search volume keyword. Facebook is where you can just go target people at, based on their interests and who they are and show them products that will be designed for them. Uh, so I, I think that one or the other is where you should start because they capture the largest market and have the best targeting platforms to reach people exactly, you know, once you know this, then you can put those informations and, and input that data into Facebook or into Google to be able to start marketing them and showing them the exact types of messages you want to show them. Um, what are their habits? How do they like to communicate? Right? These matter communication especially because if you know that they like to communicate via Messenger, you can install Messenger right on your site and more likely to have people you know, strike up a conversation and then eventually become buyers. What is your marketing message? All right, remember we talked about this earlier. Well, maybe if you went through that video in the online marketing principles, uh, this is where you take the brand that you've built and you take the audience that you're trying to reach and you create the message, okay? The message is gonna be your unique marketing angle. How are you presenting the product? Remember, we talked, uh, I keep saying remember, I don't know if you, if you watched it or not, but I talked earlier about a LED dog collar, okay? And this collar, you know, when it first came out, everybody was trying to sell it just as like, hey, here's a cool collar for your dog. And then somebody changed the message up. Right? Somebody came in and changed the message up and now created a story about dogs that are getting hit at night and how many dogs suffer each year because they get hit at night because they can't be seen by oncoming cars. And now is creating a message of safety and protection for your dog. And that's why you should get an LED collar because it's going to help uh, keep your dog safe at night, right? And so they, they changed the message. They understood their market, uh, which was dog owners. So people that love their dog, people that love their pets and don't wanna see them hurt, okay? And they understood their media, which was Facebook in this example. So they, Facebook and then people that love dogs, and now they create a message that they know is going to really hit home for people on Facebook with like viral videos and, and things like that, that that work really well on Facebook in this type of niche. So that's the idea of market message media. All three have to work together to create a good marketing campaign. You have to know how to talk to your, uh, you have to know what your market wants, you have to know what kind of message is gonna reach them best, and you have to know what is the most cost-effective way to get that message in front of them, which a lot of times is Facebook, right? Running videos on Facebook is extremely cost-effective, and that's why if you have an audience on Facebook and you can come up with a unique emotional message, you can create really great campaigns, all right? Another example is the fidget spinner. Uh, the fidget spinner actually was a product that was out way before uh, way before it was the fidget spinner, okay? There was actually a patent on this product. You can look this up. There was a patent on this product years and years and years ago under a different type of thing. And then that patent ran out and people started producing it and some marketers got a hold of it and came up with the idea of fidget, right? Let's market this as a as something that can help people with ADHD or ADD and people with attention problems, okay? And, and it was great because it one number one, it, it was actually something that helped in that area because it's, you know, it's got that natural play with it effect. But number two, that message 
uh, was so much better. That was a unique marketing message. That's what the original creator of the product never really grasped and why it, she, you know, for whatever, uh, she or he, I don't know, but for whatever reason, the product never really took off and the patent was let to run out and then some marketers got a hold of a product. The product didn't change. That's the important thing to remember here. The product didn't change. The marketing message changed, okay? So number four, you want to think about your marketing message. Number five, then you want to think about your marketing budget, okay? Your marketing budget is the starting point of your campaign strategy. Um, there's multiple ways to market. Mostly in here, we're going to talk about social media marketing and paid search marketing, right? This is Google here, basically, and social media, Facebook, and Instagram. Um, maybe we'll talk about SEO. Uh, I'll see if I can get somebody to do some, some uh, information on SEO, but... Basically, your marketing budget is going to affect what you can spend on your campaign strategy. Now, in an ideal world, building a large brand, you would have something allocated to each one of these, all right? Content marketing, social media, paid search, search optimization, SEO, and website development. But you're going to have to pick and choose based on your budget. You want to think about, the, again, the most cost-effective way that you can use your budget to start getting sales. Because at the end, that's all that really matters if, is if you are driving sales to your business. And so generally, social media is probably where most people are going to land unless you feel like you have a unique talent in search engine or paid search. Uh, or content marketing, but these are all much longer, well, except for paid search. Search engine optimization is a really long-term play. Uh, content marketing tends to be a little bit longer of a play, where social media is, is kind of direct response. You can get people to click on an ad and buy that day. Same thing with paid search. Um, but think about your marketing budget and, and how much you have to put into this launch. Okay. Uh, analyze the competition. Now, we, sh we already talked about market research. That's actually like the starting point of building your brand. But this is a reminder to go back now and kind of look at the traffic sources of your competitors. Look at their funnels, see what they're doing. It can help you tweak and never win. And at the beginning phases, we were kind of looking at it from a high concept level. This is now where you're gonna start tweaking it and, and really fine tuning. What is my funnel gonna look like? And what are the traffic sources that I should be running? And what type of ads are my competitors running that are working right now for them? And, and can I do something similar? Find your highest points of leverage, all right? This is how you can be unique. Um, we're, remember, we're working through a system here of step-by-step-by-step of step by step how you create your launch plan, all right? So now at this point, you're, you're looking at everything, your marketing budget and your existing assets and what your competitors are doing, and you want to find the highest point of leverage. I've already basically given it to you. It's probably going to be Facebook ads or influencers. Um, which again are both covered later in more depth, but for most people where you're going to, when I say leverage, right, the, the point here is how can you get the most bang for your buck out of everything that we talked about in the strategy you're forming, how can you start generating the most sales to, to, from the, from the least amount of money. Okay because there are really expensive marketing strategies out there. But what I think you should be looking for is a very direct approach. How can I start putting money in and getting money out? How can I start running ads and building a campaign and start making money? And the best place I think you're gonna do either one is Facebook ads or influencers. All right, and influencers are great for certain niches. I don't, I don't think an influencer is the right strategy for every niche, but say you're in yoga, for example, um, you know, and you have new yoga pants coming out, then yoga could be a fantastic one to go find some yoga influencers on Instagram and get a bunch of people to do uh, a shout out for you at the same time to launch your brand and start giving you like an initial push of traffic as an example. All right, now once you have basically found your highest point of leverage, you wanna think about three things, okay? 
Attraction, conversion, retention. Attraction, conversion, retention. Think about these things all the time. Attraction, reversion, contention. You want to plan how you're going to attract customers. All right. What kinds of uh, what kind of launch strategy can you have? Can you do a giveaway? Is there some kind of holiday or event coming up? Uh, what type of marketing promotion can you use to build excitement and hype around the store? Uh, giveaways is a fantastic one, by the way. Uh, that that's a really good strategy to launch um, because you can start getting a lot of people excited. You're giving value. You can build like an email list. You can build a lot of data, and you can also make sales at the same time. So. A giveaway strategy is like a, a great example of how you can attract customers uh, in, in your launch phase. How will you convert customers? We talked about that with conversion rate optimization, right? You need to think about your funnel and how you're going to convert customers. You need to monitor and respond to customer feedback as you start getting people into your funnel. And you need to start trying to collect reviews and testimonials as well, because this is an ongoing process, right? You can use these reviews and testimonials and you can use this feedback to attract more people, okay? And so this is looping back to here and attracting more people while at the same time also helping to convert more people. It becomes a, a loop, right? A self-fulfilling loop here. And then how do you plan to retain customers? You don't just want to get a customer and then never think about them again. Your goal should be to get customers and, and hopefully get them to keep coming back and purchasing more in the future. There's multiple ways you can do this. I'm not going to go into any of them in depth really here, but there's email marketing, right? Once they're a buyer, they're on your email list. So you can send them promotions throughout the year holidays, events, maybe you can get their birthday and send them a promotion on their birthday. There's, you know, multiple ways you can keep in touch through email marketing. The post purchase experience, that first experience they have with your brand can be a big first impression on whether they're going to continue to be a customer with you in the future. Uh, of course, your customer service, you should have amazing customer service. It should be one of your top priorities and goals that's going to help people stick with the brand. And in other things as well, you can do loyalty programs, rewards programs. You can have a community that backs your store if it's in like a certain niche. For example, nurses, you could have you could start a nurse community on Facebook. Uh, you could do a gamification thing as well. So these are all ways that you can go above and beyond, right? To try to keep people in your customer circle, keep them engaged with your brand um, by offering them more, giving them more ways to connect. Um, next, you're going to think about developing your assets. Okay, so at this point now we're jumping way into the future uh, because this is like once you've launched and you're running traffic and you're starting to make money. So you want to develop the assets that you have, all right? Any existing website, blogs, or businesses that you know that could help contribute to your success. A referral strategy can be a fantastic way to get new clients or new business or new customers by giving people an incentive to refer your products or your business uh, and because they get something out of it. Maybe it's a discount card or a coupon code or uh, actual giveaways and prizes, you know, referral strategy is, is something I've used before that is really powerful as a way to help start bringing in more customers. Affiliates and partnerships, you can find affiliates in your niche that are going to be willing to, uh, you know, affiliates in your niche that are going to be willing to go then to their audience or their list and promote your stuff. Uh, or partnerships, you can partner with somebody that has a big reach or already has an existing customer base and that can help you expand even more. Talents, team members, resources, offline marketing. So these are all just more ways. Again, you're developing assets that can help you get your brand, your product out there in more ways. Um, thinking about the resources you have, encouraging your team members to, to really be part of the organization and do their best. And even offline marketing can be powerful for certain niches where you can also find ways to, to bring people from the offline world to, to your store. And then also review shipping, uh, pricing and shipping, okay? So you definitely should have, have an idea now of where you're at with your pricing and shipping. But the reality is that before you launch and, and even as you're ongoing in your launch, you should think about this again just to make sure 
just to make sure that you are actually in point with a profitable business model, okay? So that's everything. That's just 10 steps that I wanted to give you that I think can help you guide you into a launch plan, right? Uh, in the now, the here and now to get you actually launched and then things to be thinking about as you grow and things to be thinking about uh, along the way. There's a lot there. This, this is homework, right? You should go through these 10 steps and actually apply this to your business as you're getting ready to launch, as you're getting to grow, as you're getting ready to do these things. And it's going to take time to go through this. There's a lot of thinking, especially in like the customer avatar part and the developing your assets part and the thinking about your marketing message part. These are things that can take, you know, hours or even a day. Your marketing message might be something that takes you, you know, hours of creative thinking and, and like storyboarding and processing, right? Whiteboarding, uh, typing, and writing out your thoughts. So go through the process, do the homework. Don't be bland. Don't be vanilla. Actually try to come up with something unique and powerful and bold to help push your brand out there and then grow your brand and consistently build momentum and keep going. All right, and that wraps up the e-commerce module now. And so now in the next stuff, we're gonna start getting into the marketing, right? Now that you have your funnel and your go-to-launch strategy, and again, it's it's not 100% exhaustive. I like to keep saying that because you should never stop learning. And, and there are other implements and other great ideas and things that you can add. But I believe what you have here is a surefire way to get you to success if you actually do the work and you actually put the time in. All right, and now from here, we're gonna start looking at other parts of the marketing in, in here with Facebook and Google and Instagram and email marketing uh, to be able to get yourself out there in front of customers and start making sales and start building your brand. All right, I will see you in the next module.